Hey folks, Will Owen here with JetBoatPilot.com. Today's video is something pretty exciting that we've wanted to do now for really almost a year. We purchased a 255 Scarab Open, or Scarab 255 Open, and a Yamaha 255 FSH Sport. And we bought them for a lot of different reasons, but one of the things I really wanted to do was do a heads up comparison between the two, side by side, showing you feature for feature, kind of the things we found to be most important for people we've talked with, the most kind of common things asked. Uh, and we're gonna do those things today. Over the course of this video series, we're gonna run through everything from low speed handling to high speed performance, to features and comfort and fishability and the helm stations and you know creature comforts, everything we can imagine. I'm gonna put that out in bite sized chunks for you on the, our YouTube channel. So uh, hopefully you get a chance to watch this entire series and hopefully this helps you make a decision between one or the other. They are two completely different platforms even though they're both 25 foot center consoles. Both are 2021 model year boats. Both have about 25 hours on them. Both are equipped very nicely with maximum horsepower for the class. So we really kind of want to compare apples for apples as close to uh, top of the line, top of the line. So when you see this video, you may see some things that are on these boats that may not be available on the base models, but uh, again, like for like. One of the things we want to do with this video series is to try to give you an honest appraisal of what we feel each of these boats has to offer. And in each segment, we're gonna give basically a thumbs up to what we believe is the one that has the better offering. So thumbs up means it gets a point. And at the end of this, when we put it all together, the total number of thumbs ups is gonna be the winner in the overall shootout. So hopefully that makes it some fun. Stick with us, got lots to show you. All right, in this comparison between the 2021 Scarab 255 Open and the 2021 Yamaha 255 FSH Sport, we're gonna compare swim platforms, kind of run down some of the things you're gonna see on both and give you the thumbs up on the winner. So for starters, let's talk about accessibility. You notice right away, I'm standing in roughly knee deep water, which is where we typically recommend that you anchor uh, no shallower than. And if you notice that the swim platform is really just above my knee, very easy to just sim simply sit down or climb on. On the Scarab, it's gonna be about a foot higher, maybe a little more than a foot higher. So still easy to get on, but accessibility wise, if you have someone that has mobility issues, the Yamaha is the easier of the two to get on. From a draft perspective, they're both gonna draw about the same. Maybe the Scarab slightly less because it does not have the articulating keel, but both are gonna be in and around the 15 inch range. So again, knee deep water is a good idea for when you're anchoring up in shallow water. The Scarab has this gigantic opening here uh, paired with the tailgate. So the tailgate model is designed basically to allow it to be legal for you to ride back here while the boat's operational. On the Yamaha, if you're riding back here operational, uh, you know, at speed, you can get ticketed for this. It's a Coast Guard issue. So uh, do not ride back here uh, because carbon monoxide and things like that, it can actually cause uh, severe illness and possibly even death if you're back here hanging out while the engines are on. The Scarab, because of the tailgate, takes care of those emissions and it's safe to ride back here while uh, the boat's cruising. Cup holders, uh, Yamaha's gonna come in with four cup holders back here on the swim platform. The Scarab has two, plus two, so four. Uh, both have tow points for water sports down low. So that's a kind of a tie there. Both have freshwater flush out ports. So you can flush after riding in salt water. Scarab's got two there. Yamaha has two here. The Yamaha features a two tier design. So you're gonna have your seating up here on the top, place to put your feet. And of course you can also sit here and dangle your feet in the water. The Scarab tends to be a little bit more flat. It is two tiered, but not quite as tall on your step. Both have stereo uh, remote controls on the transom. You'll see that on both boats. Both have cleats on the rear down low. Both are pop-out cleats. Very nice. The Yamaha seat cushions, if you'll notice, when I sit down, those cushions really kind of hit the small of my back, which is fine, it's comfortable. But if I want supreme comfort, the Scarab has a higher seat back. You flip it around, and it's a much more comfortable 
seating area. Well, let's talk about where Yamaha really shines. On the Yamaha, you have a rear hatch here. This hatch is used for wet storage. So there's a place for you to put wet towels, wet bathing suits, whatever else you don't want to bring into the boat. Also has a fill port here for fresh water rinse down. So something that the, the Scarab is not going to have. It has a kill switch here. So if you do open this up while the engines are operational, the engines do not run, meaning you do not injure yourself if you go working inside that clean out area. Uh, and the big thing, the clean out ports. Uh, if you were to suck up a rope or suck up a seagrass or suck up any kind of uh, pediment or obstruction, with the Yamaha, you can actually clear that clog topside without having to swim under the boat and then go back about you know on your on your uh, on your way it won't ruin your day the scarab does not have that feature it's a yamaha exclusive there's the access cap here this is for access to mechanical get down inside that compartment there if you need to when we're doing water sports adding ballast this compartment is big enough for us to put 200 pounds of steel shot inside this compartment. So we can actually make a bigger wave because put more ballast and it's also out of the way so you don't see it. So that's a really nice thing. There's a table mount on the back here. This comes standard with uh, every Yamaha 252, 255 FSH. Of course, it has C-Deck on it, which is an actual uh, upgrade that we've done, but standard, just the fiberglass. This makes a really handy table for back here lounging and relaxing, or a bait prep station for you serious anglers. Uh, this platform actually fills in the bow, you'll see on a later video, that makes for a casting platform to walk around and kind of make that bow more of a full walkabout uh, space, beam to beam casting platform. But so awesome that you convert this to a table back here. It also converts to a table in the bow as well, which we really love. We don't see that feature on the Scarab. It may be an option, but it did not come on our boat. Further talking about accessibility, at the swim platform, you'll see that there's a boarding ladder. This is built into the underside of the swim platform. It's got three steps. It is spring loaded, so it can be stowed away easily. Uh, a lot more securely than the previous designs with the rubber strap and uh, aids in boarding if you're in deep water. Both boats have that feature. On the Scarab, you'll notice that the when the tailgate is down, that ladder is uh, not accessible. There's a feature that they offer, it's an option you can get from the factory for an additional ladder mount that comes out here and comes over and down. So you don't have to flip the gate up to get access to the ladder. But here's the ladder. A little bit longer, a little bit wider. It's a four-rung ladder, a little, like I said, a little wider. Both stowaways similarly. Another feature that we noted on the 255 FSH, there are dual underwater LED lights on this boat that came standard. We did not get underwater, underwater LEDs on the Scarab. I don't recall if that was an option, but if it was, we did not opt for it. But that's a standard feature on the Yamaha 255 FSH. Really love that feature, especially when you're trying to go out in the evening hours and just kind of see some fish kind of around the back of the boat. Just really, really great, love that. While we're still on the subject of the swim platform, I wanna talk about storage. You know, we talked about earlier the hatch here, and the hatch is gonna have storage for wet things. You've also got some dry storage here right on top it's a huge locker this is where you're going to have access to your battery cutoffs as well as your batteries it's a huge storage space actually i can take about 250 300 pounds of steel shot and put in this locker here again if i'm out surfing that's really helpful keeps the stuff keeps the steel shot out of the the way of people walking in and out but still get the weight that you want will require some reinforcement if you decide to put that weight in there often because the, the current flooring there is not designed for that kind of weight. On the Scarab, you'll notice, while comfortable, we don't see the storage compartments. So all this area here, this is all just part of the engine hatch. So when the engine hatch lifts up, that's, this is all that. There's no storage underneath here.
On the opposite side here, we're gonna have a live well. This is probably gonna be in around the 30 gallon size. It does have an aerator. I'll turn that on for you. Once we switch the aerator on, it's gonna bring in fresh water for whatever we're riding on. It's gonna circulate it through the, the uh, tank. And then the overflow is gonna come out of the top of the pipe and it's gonna exit the boat. This is designed to keep the fish lively. So they've constantly got fresh oxygen to breathe. That's just keeping it circulated. We didn't see that feature available on the Scarab uh, for any configuration when we were building our boat. It may be a, something they've changed since then, but we did not see a live well option when we bought the boat. So, swim platforms. What do you think? The overall convenience, accessibility, creature comforts, storage, etc. We give Yamaha the thumbs up on this one. Let's compare seating configurations. You know, one of the most important things for me, and I'm sure many of you guys will agree, uh, you get the family on the boat, you go find yourself a spot at the island somewhere or wherever your favorite little hole is, and you want to throw the anchor and just sit and relax. So seating configuration is a big deal. Uh, and we're going to go through both of these boats and show you just how you can do it. We ordered this boat specifically with comfort in mind. So I ordered the cushions that were going to give me that. I believe that is optional, so pay attention to that when you're ordering your Scarab. The Yamaha is going to come standard, the way it comes, always. You really don't have a chance to configure it. It's just going to come with everything. The Scarab, you're going to have to set it up. Right away, you'll notice on the back here on the swim platform, I'm in love with this swim platform area. you got this really nice, big open kind of patio back here. Big open swim platform, high back seats. You can really just kind of kick back and lounge. If you want to sit over here, lean up against this pad here and kind of wedge yourself in the corner it's really cool these seat backs are configurable so i can take the ones from the bow and bring them back here and kind of line them up so now we've got four across if we're underway we can actually sit back here and enjoy the the view heading wherever we're going and do that safely and you know without the worry about the carbon dioxide etc We don't want to have the seating at all. Let's say I want to have some sunbathers on the boat. Now we have a full beam sun pad. I stand right about six feet tall. So I'm not, I'm not touching. Really room for two there. Super comfortable. Let's say we want to head out to sea and everybody wants to face forward. Now we have seating all facing forward. Grab handles right here. So if you're in rougher seas, you want to hold on. Nice grab handle. Seating all the way across. You have grab handles on both sides. And again, we can just kind of tuck ourselves over nice. It's got a nice pad here. So very comfortable. Moving up, talking about the helm seat. I love, love, love the fact that you can put an adult and two small children right here. My boys go with me, they sit right here and they love it. They're like, daddy, I wanna sit with you. And they sit right here, so it's really super cool. Take the seat, if you wanna flip it up, now we can sit. I usually put my cooler underneath my feet here to support my feet. A couple of little storage pockets on the side, really nice. Up in the front, jump seat here on the front of the console, comfortable, pretty straightforward. See that custom pad back here on the back here. The seat backs that we had in place in the rear, we've now brought to the front. And if you're a really tall guy, a gal, you got lots of room here to stretch out. If you got a couple, two or three people, you wanna sit them up here in the front. I'll be seating here for at least two and a half, three kids. Same thing on the opposite side, seating all the way around. This boat, we did go ahead and get the filler cushion. I don't recall if this was optional or not. It's got a basically a, a filler here for your platform, but it also has a cushion snapped to the top. We'll go ahead and slide that in place. And that's going to latch down. It's got a couple of little latches. 
Really nice configuration there, really love that. All right, well now let's look at the Yamaha and we'll do the same comparison. Right up front you'll see swim platform. We've got nice upholstered seat backs here on the swim platform. It's gonna have roughly mid back here. I'd love for that to be taller or maybe some kind of a accessory to raise it up a bit. Or even possibly a cushion right here would be great because you can kind of sit back and do that. Anyway, comfortable seating there. Coming inside, we had the seat facing forward right now, so I'll show you that first. You'll notice you've got seating for probably four right here across this, uh, this uh, back area on top of the engine compartment. Scoot all the way over to the side here. Lots of room. I would like to see a pad right here so that you can kind of tuck into the corner a little bit. Lean over, maybe a cup holder right there would be nice. Grab handle's nice. You can sit back here and if you're getting to the rough stuff, you got that nice big grab handle. Built-in cooler, give you a place to put your feet if you want, especially with a nice pad on top of that. If you want to convert this area, this cushion here will come up, see how it flaps? And these seat back cushions here, they'll simply come off. You flip this up. There's a strap normally that comes with this thing. Ours tore off. The strap, you would undo the strap, flip it down, put the cushion back. I would like to see these cushions here about maybe four or five inches taller. That way they would double as filler cushions. So then this area would be a full sun pad. Maybe we'll see that next year. But anyway, you can set this up to have yourself kind of a full beam sun pad. Very comfortable. At the helm, nice comfortable seating flip up bolsters really for two is best not quite as wide as the scarab nice place to put your feet here flip up foot rest moving around to the bow front here we've got a really wide seat here right in front of the console it's really if you got a couple small people it's uh, good enough for two but definitely a big nice comfortable area to sit now, Yamaha gave us lots of storage and usefulness with this live well here, so we kind of give up a little bit of our seating. But I do want to show you, I'm about six feet tall. Because of this cutout here, I can still fully stretch out. So lots of leg room, very comfortable. If I turn sideways, there's still room for two to sit up here, so you can seat four comfortably in the bow. And that does it for seating. So, which way are we going to go with this? I think you know which way we're going to go with this. If you're buying a boat solely for seating and comfort, <laughs> the scare wins hands down. There's just no questions. And let's talk about the helm area. You know, both of these places are gonna be where you're gonna spend most of your time as a captain. And uh, for me, this is super important to talk about comfort, seating, controls, electronics, all those things. So let's get into that. First, since we're on the Yamaha, we'll go ahead and start here. Uh, really great leaning post. Looks like it's gonna have seating for two. You have flip up bolsters that are very comfortable. When you uh, lean up against the bolster here, lots of padding. So when you're standing and driving, lots of support for your lower back there. When you sit down, something I wanna see a change, this little metal bar that holds the bolster up. When you sit down, if you don't select the right place to sit, that metal bar can dig right into your, to your sit bones there. So I'd like to see Yamaha change that, maybe add some more padding or whatever uh, to make that more comfortable. If you sit kind of off-centered, it's not as bad, but if you're like me and you ain't got a lot of cushion back there to begin with, that can dig into your bones there. Down low, you'll notice there's a flip-up footrest. Really like that a lot when you're sitting. Gives you a place to put your feet. Like that a lot. Steering wheel. It's going to have this chrome plate with the little knob here that's really nice because you have a full rotation and a half to get from lock to lock so i like that a lot when i'm controlling around the dock it is a tilt steering wheel really nice on this uh, 255 sport e series you're going to have the really nice chrome dual throttle setup here really nice to be able to take the engines and work them independently especially around the dock really love that uh, some people like one throttle some people prefer two but on this boat you're going to get two uh, you'll notice you've got some switches here, push button start, 
you're going to have your cruise assist as well as your blower. This cruise assist also doubles as your no wake feature. So if I'm in a no wake zone, I can choose no wake settings to kind of give you the max speed without uh, creating wake. Of course, down low, we have a storage hatch here or storage compartment here in the glove box. We've got our storage area here with our key and our lanyard, our safety lanyard here. It's nice. It's going to have an accessory plug here to plug in like an inflation pump. That's really nice if you're going to be inflating some towables or filling up a water bag. Really great. Switches up on the dash. Nav lights, courtesy lights, map lights, spreader lights, live well lights, underwater lights, a couple of accessories, forward live well, aft live well, raw water wash down, fresh water wash down, and then your bilge and your horn. The uh, raw water wash down and fresh water wash down, I do want to go ahead and show that since we are in the area. So your fresh water wash down and your raw water wash down connects here at the uh, kind of to the starboard side right by your engine hatch. And I've got it connected here to the fresh water for now. It's the lower of the two. You're going to have a little nozzle and hose that comes standard, comes with the boat, just plugs in. It's a quick disconnect. And when we uh, want to use this, all we have to do is select the switch on the dash for fresh water wash down. And then you do not have to have your engines on. It's got an electric pump. It's got good pressure. Uh, and it's going to have about a 10 gallon tank, I believe, uh, underneath this compartment. You fill this through the swim platform hatch back in the back there. Really great feature. If you want to use it for, let's say I've got fish guts on the boat or fish blood or whatever else, and I want to change over to salt water, just connect to the raw water side of this. Quick disconnect. And we have raw water. You do not have to have the engines on as in the previous uh, generation boats. They always worked off pump pressure. This is actually working off of a uh, jet pump pressure. This does not work off jet pump pressure. This works off of an actual um, electrical pump uh, built into the boat. So a really cool feature. Love that about the Yamaha. Up on the dash, you're going to see a 7-inch connect screen. This is going to give you all the pertinent information that you're going to need for the boat systems. Uh, fuel, uh, stereo volume, RPM, speed, battery voltages, your compass heading, port engine hours, starboard engine hours. Like I said, we've got roughly 25 hours on this boat here. Your target speed, we've selected 11.2 because we like to go surfing. That's kind of the target speed for surfing. We have our uh, stereo controls here to connect to a Bluetooth, obviously AM, FM. And then your menu here is going to give you time, unit, wellness, tuner region, brightness, and language. And on the other side here, this is a little button that we've seen used when the engines are operational to convert your twin engine into a single engine throttle. Uh, so to go from a two throttle setup to a one throttle setup, you would simply press the throttle button and that combines the two. That kind of rounds out the connect screen on the Yamaha. You've got a five, uh, five volt port here for connecting a smartphone. This is going to be a rapid charge. You've got a nice phone holder here that holds your phone there, real sturdy. Comes with a compass built in. Standard on the 255 FSH Sport E series, this came with a really nice large screen SIMRAD. That's going to have your depth, GPS charts, navigation, all those things. I don't fully understand it completely because I haven't had a chance to really spend a lot of time with it, but I love, love, love the fact that I have this really large screen. I can get in and see all the depths. So you can see the depths in the area that you're boating. Really, really helpful when you're not certain of the depths. So that's a standard feature on the 255 FSH Sport E series. Up on the top, we've got cup holders. We've got a GPS puck here. Nice big grab handles here for when you get into rough stuff and you're really kind of fighting. Nice place to hold on. We have a glass windshield that goes all the way up to the top. So you get an enclosure here. It keeps that cold morning air off of you if you're going out in the mornings and it's cool. You want to try to stay uh, a little bit warmer, a little bit more protection here than we've seen as compared to the steer next door. Again, we would have liked to have seen a storage box up top here. Uh, we didn't see that. Let's move over to the Scarab. All right, getting into the Scarab helm, you'll notice right away that we've got this great big wide leaning post that has enough room if you're uh, coming out with your kids for an adult and two children, and maybe even three small adults if you want. Definitely two big guys. You've also got this really cool drop down seat. So if you want to ride sitting up like this, very comfortable. If you want to stand, just pull the tab, it drops down and now you can drive race style. 
Scarab's got a racing heritage, got a history in racing, and so I'm sure that they've wanted that as one of the key features, being able to just stand and drive right in the middle. So really cool, love that. Up on the dash here, you'll notice we've got our kill switch here. We have our ignition switch, one key, and also two push buttons, one for the port, one for the starboard. Nice Scarab badged steering wheel, it is tilt. On this particular boat, we do have the electronic thr throttles as well as the electronic uh, INR. It's the uh, intelligent neutral and reverse feature. So our electric, our reverse buckets are electronic, just like on the Yamaha. It's a single lever, so your throttles are combined on both engines. A little trigger there to actuate that up and down. On the dash, we're going to have a large screen touch screen it's going to give you all your important information just like on the connects over next door your speed you have your cruise setting where your gear is actually situated currently be it forward neutral or reverse your fuel reading rpms are also listed you have your engine temperature and your battery it's also going to let us select through things like your gps nav which this particular version did come with the gps system your charts it's going to have your controls for your stereo, Bluetooth, AM, FM. Get over here, it's going to show you your, um, your depths, I believe is here. Pertinent information, temperature, water temperature. More settings. If you wanted to add things like camera, media, etc., this is going to be an access point for that. Your volume control up and down, your mute button, and then track forward, track, track back. You have on both sides phone storage, so spring loaded, just like you saw next door. We have also connection ports here, rapid charge for USB. Same thing on the opposite side. Down low here, we have another connection USB and an auxiliary. Got a couple of cup holders down low here. Nice heavy duty aluminum. Uh, billet grab handles here, very sturdy. Nice pocketed area up on top here. Glass windshield, wrap around. It does have a little uh, slot here for wind to come through. So summertime, that's great because you want that cool. You want to stay cool, but in the wintertime, it's going to give a little more uh, wind. Also a little more noise, we noticed. Up top, in this nice storage area on top, this is lockable. So I love that feature. So speakers up top both have speakers up top like that that's going to round out the helm area you know i guess it's kind of subjective between these two boats both have great features both are comfortable uh, both have a lot of things going for them uh, hard to call a thumbs up for this one i guess i'd give both of them a thumbs up on on this uh on this particular comparison both have done a great job um, for me personally, I love the Jumbotron, but then I also love over here the big wide seat and the, the things that are comfortable for my kids. So again, I'm going to give a, a, a thumbs up for both on this uh, Helm comparison. All right, let's talk about storage. Storage capacity, overall storage offering uh, between the 255 Yamaha FSH and the 255 Scarab Open. Uh, you can tell on the Yamaha that it was something that the engineers really wanted to, to give consideration to the boater who... Uh, thinks storage is very important. Uh, families, captains in general, I know for me personally, I, I love as much storage as possible on my boats. So um, as we talked about in previous videos, you got this great big nice storage area right here on the port side, back on the swim platform. We've got a great big large storage locker here for wet storage right here by our clean out ports. We've got a, this is not necessarily storage, but there is a large tank there. And if you were not using it for fishing, you just wanted to put wet towels in it, that certainly would work for your, for your live well there. Underneath your cushions here, you're going to have a really cool hatch lid here. And although there is some mechanical, there's also room for tackle boxes or other bags or things that you're not necessarily worried about being around that, uh, that gear. But So great big storage area there. On the opposite side, not as much storage. Because on this boat, and I'm assuming it's the same on 252s, you've got a pump here and you've got a freshwater tank as well as, well as an air filter. So not as much. 
I wouldn't really recommend using this much for storage unless you had a tray that you could put in uh, and make, make a small storage box out of that. Boat's going to come with an onboard cooler. You can stow away some drinks and things in there. Glove box here right at the helm. And a little cubby just off to the side here. It's really nice for keys and phone and wallet, etc. Would have liked to have seen a uh, storage box here up on top. For whatever reason they chose not to do that this year, maybe they'll hold off and do that next year. Giant live well here that we actually used as a cooler once. It was really cool. So bringing on your drinks and putting a bunch of ice in there, it was really neat. You could see your drink <laughs> through the window there. That was really awesome. Over on the other side, opposite side, you're going to have a really nice drawer to put in your pliers or knives or any kind of things for bait prep, as well as these Plano boxes, all come standard. Inside this locker, one of the things I really love, Yamaha started doing this just a few years ago, is the dedicated trash can and the holder. So you actually have a place that everyone knows where the trash is, so that's really great. Also inside this locker, you're going to have the storage for your table leg and then your live well poles there. I always put my shoes in there. It just makes a great storage area in general. In the front of the console, I have a large changing area with a curtain. This is a zippered curtain, so you can come in, you can change clothes, you can put giant beach chairs in here, towels, bags, whatever. That's usually what happens when I go out. All the beach bags and the kids' toys all get ended up in here. Life jackets, ropes, uh, buoys, whatever, or, or uh, bumpers, fenders. <clears throat> this is also going to be where you find a lot of your access to uh, electronics behind the helm, but a huge storage area. This does go forward a good bit too. In the floor, <clears throat> we've got a large hatch lid here. We flip this up. I like that it's got a gas strut. It just makes it, makes it more certain that it's not going to come down on you. Large open space here, and inside this area, there's a, a little receptacle for a five gallon bucket, like a bait bucket, for people to put a cast net or you know, whenever you get ready to catch some bait fish. It's really important for the fishermen to have that five gallon bucket. So, uh, Yamaha made place for that, put it right in the floor. Underneath each seat here, on the starboard side of the boat, you've got a cooler, so you can put some ice in there and throw your catch inside your cooler that is going to drain outside the boat. On the opposite side, just a really great big large storage area. Really large storage area. It's going to go all the way forward here under this cup holder and then all the way back to this bulkhead right here. And then in the front, we have a very large, uh, well thought through anchor locker. <clears throat> what I love about this anchor locker is it's very deep and it's very broad. So you can put a Fortress FX7 in here or other anchors of that size. A suitable anchor for this kind of boat in the coastal environment. Uh, really well thought through. Does not have a boarding ladder like you'll see on the Scarab. It's one thing I would like to see on this boat, but uh, tons of storage for a ladder. That's the storage for the Yamaha. Let's move to the Scarab now. So starting from the rear, uh, there's no storage in the back here on the engine area. Underneath these cushions, there's, it's just simply engine hatch. It's a really large engine hatch. You do have little pockets on the back of the seat cushions, which is kind of cool. You can stow some things there. Coming up to the console here, we get some pockets up on the helm, as well as a really nice lockable storage box up top. really like that feature a lot. Moving up to the front. We're going to have our changing room. Zippered, of course. Same as before on the Yamaha. We're going to have access to mechanical and your electrical there. Uh, and pretty, pretty deep, so you can fit in there. Most adults can fit in there just fine. floor locker, you'll notice that it's very long, but one of the things I've noted is it's not very wide. So getting an anchor in this compartment and getting it to lay flat, uh, you don't really 
have as much width there so the, the edges here they cut into the fiberglass a little bit so you'll need to line that with some kind of protectant if you're going to put an anchor here the reason we have our anchor in this compartment when we get up to the front i'll show you in the anchor locker the anchor locker is pretty small on this boat so the anchor won't fit needed a bigger anchor for a 25 foot boat so it had to go there underneath these two uh, seats here you have pretty ample storage there to bring bags and coolers On the port side, flip your cushion up. You've got a decent sized storage locker there. Pull the cushion up here. Flip this latch. Fairly decent sized storage locker there. Great for shoes. Opposite side. Storage locker here, great for lines, etc. One thing I noted was there's no built-in cooler for catching fish and then putting your catch in. So you need to bring that kind of cooler on board. And then finally, in the front here, we've got our anchor locker. I want you to get in kind of a close-up here. We do have a boarding ladder, which is nice. Get this all the way forward. You can have the kids coming on and playing and jumping. But the ladder, oh excuse me, the anchor locker is pretty small. So because of the depth see how this is very close to here there's just not enough room to put in a decent size anchor for this boat now it doesn't mean you can't put an anchor in here and just we've had difficulty finding any of our anchors could fit in this locker so uh, we like a big big anchor locker for different types of anchors everyone's got different conditions different uh different waterways they boat on so having those options is really great um so for comparisons we're talking storage we're talking convenience we're talking maximum storage space for you and your family hands down no question Yamaha gets the thumbs up on this one all right now let's compare fishability we're comparing 2021 Yamaha 255 FSH Sport versus 2021 Scarab 255 open fishability this one's gonna be pretty thorough on this Yamaha lots to talk about first of all you notice right here in the back I have the bow filler floor set up on the factory leg that comes with the boat this is the table leg because this doubles as a table in the bow and in the back here if you want to have a bait prep station if you're cutting squid or whatever it is you're doing having it right up here highlight this really helps you're not stooping over so really nice to have a bait prep station right up front when Yamaha engineers built this boat, I know personally they came to Panama City, Florida, this is where we're filming today, and they tasked local anglers, local professionals, to give them advice about how to make a great boat, a great fishing boat. And one of the things they pointed out was you want to be able to get up on top and fish top water, meaning you want to stand up high and look down on whatever you're trying to fish. So these pods came into play. You saw them first on the 210 FSH, and now they're obviously on the 255. So a really great spot in the back corner here to stand up, fish top water. You can see what you're fishing for and get, kind of get a better perspective from up above. Everyone knows when you're saltwater fishing, and maybe you got freshwater guys too, but especially you saltwater guys, having live bait is a big deal. So having the onboard live well, not just one on this boat, about 30 gallons back here, but also in the front, they turn on the live well aerators here. Full aerator, live well in the front. That's gotta be at least 30, 40 gallons. Water's gonna flow out of the little overflow valve there and it's gonna run right out the side of the boat, a little drain there. As it fills up, you'll see it start to overflow. So really great to have this visibility here, seeing your fish and there's lots of room there Put a ton of bait fish in that live well there. If you're going saltwater fishing, you're going to bring a crew with you, you're going to have a lot of rods. So, Yamaha really talk, thought that through. If you walk around the boat and look, we've got rod holders. We're going to start counting. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. On the wall, 10, 11, 12, 13. On the back side, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. We have four more just like this on the other side here. So 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 
rod holders. Again, Yamaha engineers really designing this boat for the fishermen. Plano boxes, they come standard. Sliding drawer here for pliers and other things you're going to need. Standard. Nice UHMW. It's a polymer door here, it's going to last you forever. Nice chrome handles. Storage area here with a dedicated trash can. The pod, we talked about the casting pod in the rear. They bring this to the front. You got two guys fishing, one's in the back, one's in the front. You want to tangle your lines up, you're going to sight cast this way. Just having that ability to go top water like that is a huge deal. Then on the starboard side of the boat, you've got a cooler, so you can put some ice in there and throw your catch inside your cooler that is going to drain outside the boat. Remember our bait prep station from the back? Slides in place. It's got a couple of latches, so it's going to lock in place. You're going to put your handles down so you don't step on those. And now we have full beam fishability. Without any obstructions, you're not worried about stepping down. You don't have to look down. It's just very easy to move and be free to fish about this area here. Obviously in the front, top of the anchor locker. If we want to fish here, again, sight casting. All of those things combined give this boat a great ability to take you out and do some serious fishing. All right, fishability on the Scarab 255 open. Back here on the swim platform, you do notice that you have a great big, large open swim platform. Lots and lots of room here to move about without having to worry about looking down to see where you're going. You're going to have a couple of rod holders here. Now, I don't know if this came standard, but I know our boat came with it. There's a rod holder here, a rod holder here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six rod holders on the boat. I'm going to move these cushions out of the way. Decide you're going fishing one day, you want to leave your cushions at home because you don't want to get fish guts all over your cushions. Take the cushions off. This deck here becomes really even larger spot for you to go cast. Full beam. And again, we're really without having to worry too much about what you're stepping on. There's not really a lot to worry about here. So cast on the port, cast on the starboard side. So tons of room back here in the back. Moving into the front, once again, day full of fishing. Leave your cushions at home. You got these great big areas here, lots of room, lots of pads. We put non-skid here, comes with a factory non-skid otherwise, but full beam to beam casting, port and starboard. A little narrower here in the bow than it is over next door, but still plenty of room. And obviously up on top here, sight casting, we want to sight cast, get up high. Lots of footing here with these pads up top, we can see what we're casting to. We're not sure if... Scarab engineers designed this for you to stand, but it sure is nice having this pad up here. If you're able to get up here somehow safely, which we don't see a way to do that now, but if you were, this could also be used to cast from up, up top. We believe this is really just used more for cosmetics and something cool than it was for actually giving you a place to, to cast from. Uh, but if there were access to it, there were a ladder, who knows, maybe you could sight cast from there. But sticking with what's practical and what we know, it's just, this boat was made to go fishing. It's literally titled FSH. And uh, it looks an awful lot like fish to me. So if I'm comparing these two boats and fishing is the only thing that's important to me, hands down, no questions asked, the Yamaha is going to have the edge when it comes to fishability. All right, let's talk tow sports. Tubing, wakeboarding, surfing, anything out having fun with your family. Let's talk about which boat is actually best set up for that right out of the gate. Uh, if you'll notice on top of the Scarab, you'll see that there is a tow point up on top of the tower. If you pan over to the top of the Yamaha, no such luck. So for those of you guys that really want that surf boat, not saying you can't do it on the Yamaha, but it's just easier if you tow your tow rope from a, a, a high point like this. Scarab built that in. Uh, the console is secured to the floor in such a way that that point can actually deliver the power you need to actually use that tow rope. The Yamaha, we have towed uh, a tow rope you know, for a surfer, connecting it to the back of the rod, rod holder there, but it's not recommended because the floor where the tower connects, there's no real confirmation that the floor is strong enough to handle all that weight, handle all those loads. So right up front for, for tow sports, that uh, tow point there gives the scarab an edge. Both boats have a tow point down low for towing a tube or towing a wakeboard or towing a, uh, even a surf rope. And, and it's okay to pull from here. It's just easier to get someone up out of the water if they're surfing or 
if they're uh, wakeboarding or skiing from a higher point. Both have large platforms. Both have easy on and off, easy uh, accessibility for water sports. Both boats are jet boats, which means there's no exposed propeller down there. So while you have water sports people, and your kids are in the water, anybody that's participating in water sports, they're not exposed to the prop. So both are really great in that regard. Uh, we've actually surfed behind this boat and created maybe the best surf wave we've ever seen on a Yamaha boat uh, or a jet boat in general behind this 25 footer here. We feel like that's because the console is sitting more aft and so the weight is more focused in the back. So we got a better wave on this boat. Both boats are able to do the surfing, the wakeboarding, the tubing piece very well. Uh, again, Scarab's going to have the dedicated tow point on the tower. The Yamaha, not recommended, although yeah, I know you're going to do it. <laughs> we, we did it, but they're not going to back it. And if you do something that you damage it, they're going to say, hey, you weren't supposed to do that. So just bear that in mind. Uh, but with that said, both of them do a great job when it comes to water sports. Both have plenty of power to pull whatever you want to pull back here. So for that reason, both of them are going to get the thumbs up when it comes to water sports. Well, let's talk price. I know you guys are all asking the question, what's it going to cost me? Uh, we bought this boat in 2021. Retail price was listed on Yamaha's website at or around $83,000, all inclusive. That meant all the accessories, all the electronics, all the cushions, trailer, the whole package. Yamaha just kind of gives you a package. The Scarab on the website, when I built it out, retail came in at around $102,000. Um, so there's that. Right off the bat, Yamaha's gonna be priced lower on the website. Now, I think it bears mentioning that Scarab builds in more margin up front than does the Yamaha. You'll have a better chance negotiating with a Scarab than you will with a Yamaha. All bets are off now that COVID's been here and boats are scarce, you may not negotiate any. But with that said, the margin is definitely greater on a Scarab versus a Yamaha, so that difference may not be quite as drastic considering there's negotiability here most of the time. Uh, but if we're just looking at dollar for dollar, value for value, what you get on this boat versus this boat, you get the giant jumbotron screen, you get all the cushions and the accessories, you get the live wells, and you get the, the different storage compartments, and you get all the various uh, amenities that come with the Yamaha, you compare it to the Scarab, there's no question for the value, for the dollar, the Yamaha hands down is the thumbs up winner on this one. All right, let's talk speed and performance. A lot of you guys out there are going to be gearheads and you're coming off of things where you got fast cars and you want to have fast boats. If speed's your thing, this segment's going to be for you. Both these boats, when we purchased them, we wanted them to be the top of the category. So on the Scarab, this is going to have twin 300 horse. Uh, four-stroke supercharged engines total horsepower per 300 combined total of 600 horsepower we've clocked the top speed on this boat here up around 57 58 miles an hour uh, that was with a little tailwind that day rumor has it you can go a little faster won't go into all those details right now but it is possible to go a little faster than that on the Yamaha twin 250s uh, four-stroke fuel injected supercharged uh, both are going to use super uh, unleaded gasoline is ideal and recommended. 250 horse times two, 500 horse on that boat. We've seen top speeds up around 54 mile an hour with a tailwind. So the Scarab definitely has the performance uh, edge when it comes to top speed. In just a minute, we'll show you a heads up comparison running flat out so you can see for yourself. Uh, while up on step, while cruising at high speeds, we felt like both boats were sure footed and felt very comfortable. Both hulls performed well. And uh, really can't determine which one is better as far as ride overall total. I might give the Scarab the nod for overall comfort at high speeds. But uh, again, both boats do operate and ride very comfortably in the chop. Uh, both weigh about the same. Uh, and again, uh, if I had to pick one as far as comfort goes, uh, on high speeds and, and riding, running through the chop. Maybe the Scarab has the edge there. So for those of you guys that are into performance, you want that real purist jet boat feel, the Scarab is really the boat you're going to want because it does not have the articulating keel like the Yamaha does. This boat's going to have the ability to really make those super tight high speed turns and really kind of spin the boat out and some of those old characteristics that you've seen for years on more of your uh, early generation jet boats. Yamaha added the articulating keel uh, starting around 2015 and although that definitely helps with low speed maneuverability 
as, as well as stabilizing the boat during water sports activities, it does take away from some of that high speed performance. You just can't carve as tight. So if that's your thing, if you're wanting high speed, if you're wanting uh, uh, performance and, and turnability, if, if having fun behind the wheel is your thing, the Scarab is definitely the one that you want to go with. Now, before I give my vote here on the thumbs up, which one wins, let's go ahead and watch a quick comparison. We're going to go out and run these things wide over top speed and you can see for yourself which one wins. Stick with us. Three, two, one, go! seen it for yourself the scarab just hands down uh, if you just tell them go for it starting from a dead standstill all the way up to full speed uh, there's no comparison it's a 600 horsepower package versus a 500 horsepower package I was surprised though how close the Yamaha did stay with the scarab so it's, it's no slouch but again if you just got to have the fastest thing out there the scarab is definitely gonna be the one that you want so for performance and as well as top speed the scarab definitely gets our thumbs up all right, let's talk maneuverability around the dock, low speed maneuverability. You know, everybody that you talk to that is outside of the jet boat space, anybody that's working for an IO dealer, for an outboard dealer, they're all going to dog the jet boat. They're going to say jet boats handle terribly at low speeds. And that may have been true uh, back in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, but after uh, around the 2015 time period or so, Yamaha came out with a suite of low speed maneuvering uh, enhancements that made their boats perform so much better around the dock. Articulating keel, now the new lateral style reverse buckets, of course there are no weight modes on the dash. The Scarab has these great big reverse buckets that have these huge shrouds that kind of divert reverse flow out to the sides. When you're around the dock you have a tremendous amount of command while you're maneuvering. So, just to dispel that myth right up front, if you're considering a jet boat, jet boats have come a long way. And while they're still going to take a learning curve there to become proficient and really get good at it, they're way better than they once were. And I think you're going to find they're a lot easier to get the control for. Now, aftermarket accessories come into play and Jet Boat Pilot specializes in low speed enhancements. So if you decide you want to buy a jet boat and you want to improve low speed maneuverability, we're the people to talk to. We can help you get even further down the road more confidence, more control. But right out of the box, from the factory, which of these two boats has the best control around the dock? This is gonna create a probably a firestorm on the comments below because everyone has their opinion and they're all passionate about the brands that they support, right? The Scarab has these great big reverse buckets we talked about. When I put the boat in neutral, I can turn the wheel to the right and the bow goes to the right in neutral. I can keep it in neutral, turn the wheel to the left and the bow goes to the left in neutral. I don't even have to have the boat in gear. Put it in reverse, the boat backs up quickly, it turns rapidly, there's tremendous control. Lots and lots and lots of control. The Yamaha, with the advent of the new V-shaped kind of uh, lateral uh, style reverse bucket, when I put the boat in reverse and turn the wheel over, the boat controls very well in reverse. It has command, you have control over the boat. Because of the rudder now, there's additional control while I'm moving forward. Uh, approaching a trailer or in a no wake zone, there's more control than there once was. If I'm just asking for which boat has the most control, the Scarab has more control. But I wanna break this down a little bit because having more control doesn't necessarily mean more command or more confidence. This boat, when I approach a dock, I've noticed with both engines on, I have so much control, I oversteer. I'm, I'm erratic. With the Yamaha, when I approach the dock, both engines on, I feel like I'm in, I'm more in control. Even though there's less control, I don't have as much ability to move the boat around, I feel like I am more in control with both engines turned on. If I want to increase my confidence, I always turn one engine off on this boat. So I feel like I have a little bit more command. I'm not quite so erratic or all over the place. Another thing to keep in mind, both boats have reverse control. The Scarab has more reverse control. But the Scarab control in reverse is counterintuitive 
to what you are probably already accustomed to if you're coming off of an I.O. or an outboard or even just driving a car. If you steer in reverse with this boat and you put the boat in reverse and you turn the wheel to the right, the stern goes to the left. So it's backwards. On the Yamaha, if I put the boat in reverse and turn the wheel to the right, the back of the boat goes to the right, the stern goes to the right, like your I.O. or your outboard or your car. So we consider it intuitive. So there's two start approaches, two different approaches to controlling the boat in reverse here. Both are effective. One's gonna be intuitive, one's counterintuitive. One has more control, one has a little less control. There's products available in the aftermarket to make the boat perform better. Jet Boat Pilot can help you with that. But right out of the box, which has what we consider the best confidence for you, for the user? What are you gonna feel most confident with? It's a really tough one to call. We're going to give both of them the thumbs up. Scarab and Yamaha both get the thumbs up on this because everyone has their opinion. Everyone has their unique perspective on uh, which is best for them. Uh, I could probably lean one way or the other, but I don't want to come across as biased. So both are going to get the thumbs up on this one here. They've definitely come a long way. And if you're in the market for a jet boat potentially, don't let those guys tell you that the boat doesn't perform well at low speeds because they definitely have come a long way. Uh, so hopefully that helps you out with that particular question, and hopefully um, this video has benefited you. So again, thumbs up for both. All right, well, coming back to the dock here, getting ready to load up on the trailers. Had a long day today of filming, shooting all the various comparisons between the Yamaha 255 FSH Sport and, of course, the 255 Scarab Open. And uh, we've tallied the numbers. It looks like the thumbs up. Overall, the Yamaha just barely edged out the Scarab. Uh, but not quite the blowout that I kind of would have thought in the beginning. Both have their merits. Both are strong in their own areas. So overall value, the Yamaha I think is going to carry it home. Overall performance, if you're looking for performance, I think the Scarab is going to carry it home. Uh, but that wraps it up today. I hope this video series has been helpful to you. If you're considering buying one of these two platforms, maybe this video kind of helped you kind of narrow down uh, some of the decisions and some of the things you'd like to know. Uh, for more information about these two platforms, feel free to comment below. We'll answer those questions as quickly as we can. Obviously, find us at jetboatpilot.com, contact us page. You can reach us email, phone, however you like. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, any of those social media streams, we'll be glad to answer your questions there. Again, we're always jet boat centric here. Anything to do with jet boats, we're the people. We really don't get it, kind of get outside that space, but if it's jet boat specific, that's where we live. So we hope you enjoyed this series. We certainly enjoyed making it. We appreciate you watching it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.